I am Dan with Family Piano, and I'm, I'm blah, 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 blah. I am Dan with Family Piano, and I'm not sure what's worse right now, the sound of my voice or the sound of this piano. So yes, I recently acquired this uh, brand new 1951 Wurlitzer Spinet Piano. Brand new, well, you know, if you think in terms of geologic time scales, it's brand new. But, uh, well, yeah, 72 years old. I was actually able to acquire this for free. And a couple reasons I wanted to get this one. Number one, since it's a spinet, I was able to uh, get it into my minivan to bring it to my house. And also because I wanted a project piano. Why do I want a project piano? Well, I'm about four years from retirement. Then once I do retire, get another day job, and then get the house paid off. Well, once the house is paid off, I can afford to do something that's, you know, maybe just something that's more fun for me, something I'm more interested in. So I've been playing around with the idea of becoming a piano technician. And so there's no real schools that you can go to to become a piano technician, unless you live in Boston or a few other areas. But there is a school of YouTube, and there's some wonderful books, such as Pianos Inside Out. And there's all sorts of piano technicians out there showing how to do things, all things piano. But, hey, you know, watching someone do something on YouTube is one thing. The way I learn is I have to get my hands on something. So what better way to learn to become a piano technician than to get a janky old piano and fix it up. And so this will be my first step towards deciding if I really, really want to do the piano technician thing through refurbishing this piano here. This piano does have uh, several issues with it. And so if me, as an inexperienced piano technician, really mess something up with this piano, well, it was free and I got some free experience out of it. Well, minus the cost of tools and books and stuff like that. But hey, if I mess up the piano, no big loss. Sorry. But another reason I want to get this piano is because it's a Wurlitzer piano. Wurlitzer. Many of you probably have never even heard of Wurlitzer. Well, one of the reasons I wanted to learn to play piano is because I want to play organ at church. I'm weird. But also there was a time when I got off on a YouTube rabbit's trail of the old theater organs. And one of the most colossal of those organs was what was called the Mighty Wurlitzer. Well, that's the same company that built this piano. So I'll be restoring the not-so-mighty Wurlitzer. But hey, maybe an experience of... Uh, tinkering with this, playing it, I'll be on my way to maybe playing a real Wurlitzer someday. If the historical society will trust me in a, I don't know. Anyhow, well enough babbling. First, let's get a baseline for how the piano sounds right now. As I'm sure you'll notice, it's perfectly in tune for an old time bar piano. <laughs> Sustain pedal doesn't work. So the first thing you might notice is that if you take a straight edge, some of the keys are just maybe a teensy tiny bit off level. Now getting down to underneath the piano, the ward, well, really the whole piano has this crazy faux leatherette stuff. Uh, there's this speaker grill material that's dry rotted away. 
so I mean cosmetically I mean yeah it'll get fixed underneath here when I first got the piano uh, this rod was kind of sitting up there but the sustain pedal uh, was not hooked up to anything so obviously you fix that this pedal it actually was hooked up I just removed it when I was vacuuming it out so I'll be putting that back in so starting from the bottom doesn't seem to be I mean there's like some drips and stuff but I don't see any like signs of flooding and then there's a little stuff here and there and there's the pedals so I vacuumed it out but it does need to be cleaned up a bit more uh, there's wax here you'll see on top that it looks like some candle dripped down there the strings themselves for the most part seem to be in good shape there's this one here seems to have some sort of rust or something on it but it was just that one all the rest look pretty good seems to have the original bass strings I didn't see anything that obviously looked like it had been replaced and that's badger handmade uh, harp or frame 2851 so I wonder if that's the 28th week of uh, there's an S that's a 2851 so probably the 28th week of 1951 the action doesn't seem to be I mean other than just being old doesn't seem to have any catastrophic I guess I could say uh, issues all the keys do work well and work is a relative term. I mean, do they do play and make a sound, but nothing seems like it's like moving to the side to side, like something's completely broken inside of it. It just badly needs a good regulation. Probably needs new felt. Um, and I'll show you some of the key issues. Here's the upside. Yes, the hammers have significantly yellowed, but starting with the hammers. Uh, this piano has been played a lot, not at the last home it was in, but you can tell from all the grooves in the hammers, even all the way up on the treble side. Down to the bass side, so not just the middle, but all these show significant wear, so those will, I'll be uh, sanding those down resurfacing them so I'll have to do a voicing uh, the dampers also are pretty well grooved in there Where, which one is this one that's sharp there All right, I might need to replace the felt I don't know uh, so of them like this one here which key is that there it is So that one doesn't go back in place like it's supposed to. So figure out what's going on there. Uh, some of the keys bounce. This one here. hear that double bounce there that's because on this key this is one of the low ones there but if I press it slowly I'm not even getting to the let off some of the keys do have good let off like this one here if I press it in that seems to be pretty good so of course, this whole action will need to get regulated to get that correct. And probably a bunch of stuff. I, of course, uh, tuning also. Probably what I'll start with is a basic, uh, just tune the whole thing up. Right now it's about, I think, 150-ish cents low, which is quite low. So I'll be doing a pitch raise on this. And we'll see how that goes. We'll see how many strings I break. So. Probably there will be some string replacements in my future. Hopefully not on the bass end because I know 
to do that properly, you kind of have to send it off to a place that makes them. So I guess we'll be finding out how much that costs. So the strings here, maybe I can use a heat gun or something. I'm not sure, but uh, somebody had a candle burning on top of this. And you can see that there's melted wax on some of those strings down there. And they still sound okay. Aside from being out of tune. So even though this is a spin and a drop action, it doesn't have those things on the back that you gotta take off, so the keys come out pretty easily here. Just like so. And they're all numbered so that I don't get them mixed up, which is nice. Alright, found our first artifact, a little hairpin. So I've loosened these, but there is a smaller screw under here. I wonder if that's for more exact placement. Or... Oh, I'll be taking that out too. Okay, and then there's a couple shims behind each one of these. Let's record where they were. That one had two. Two. One. One. Got another artifact here. J. Emerson, PH, Fafala, and U9 288, Choctaw, Oklahoma. Interesting. I wonder if this was. Originally on the piano somewhere. So there it is, years and years of dust and gunk. Looks like a little bit of autumn the piano's already paying for itself. Two thousand four penny. Looks like there's punchings and pads under here. This felt doesn't seem to be in too bad of a shape. Different story up here though. Some of these are it's like something was spilled on it or something. So some of these off to replaced. They polish these with some 2000 grit sandpaper. And then the next step would be to get the action out. So I figured out why some of the keys are dipping. What's going on is these punches right here on the balance, well, some of the uh, felt punches have disintegrated, essentially. So what that does with the key here is you have the balance point right here, and you have this touching the uh, little drop action. I don't know all the correct terminology yet, I'm sorry. But if if I just lower my finger a bit here where the balance point is you see that the key dips a little bit so since these felts have disintegrated on some of the keys then those are the keys that have been down a little bit so I'm going to purchase new felts to get the keys back up to where they're supposed to be probably do paper punches also and all that to get them all nice and even and that should go a long ways towards getting the action uh, closer to where it should be this is about 0.2, but it's been compressed, so I'll make sure that whatever I get is at least 
uh, 0.2 inches thick and then for these guys and then the balance ones are about 0.97 about 0.1 and I realize that there's these paper punchings down here but you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and start fresh because these won't mean much anyway once the new felt punchings are on there. Alright, so the string side of the action here. See if there's anything obviously wrong here. There's like, looks like bubbles in the filter. Is that bugs? Not sure what that is. Looks like a. Okay, yeah. There's some sort of bugs that have been eaten in here. What the heck are those? Well, piano bugs. But they like damper felt, apparently. Nothing seems to be alive in there. Not sure what that is. Oh, there's a bug embedded in there. Jeez Louise. Yuck. Oh, I think that's. Oh, I see. That's the actual wood back there. So, yeah, I think I'm going to uh, go ahead and replace the uh, dampers. <laughs> on this piano here. Uh, as far as the hammers go, I don't see anything similar on the hammers here. Alright, yuck. It's disgusting. One of these was not going back, so I'm guessing there is a return spring issue somewhere. See, these all have spring tension on them. This one does not. And this hammer here, there's that spring back there. I can't quite get the camera to focus just right going in through the top, but there's a spring back there that is not pushing like it is on all these others here. All right, I got this removed. But in doing that, I found a lot more of these corpses back here. Ugh. Man, I don't know if I'm going to need to take this whole thing apart. <laughs> Okay, so with this one uh, muting hammer, here's the spring here, and it looks like there's supposed to be, uh, well, you can see it down in there. There's the coil that it's supposed to be attached to. The one adjacent to it, you can see the coil right down in the that pocket there. So I'll need to get a new one of those. Now, I do notice on some of these, as I give each one a little push, some are lighter than others. And those are pretty stiff. This one was really light, the first one. That one's a bit lighter. They feel like they're getting a little lighter towards the treble side, which I suppose makes sense. That one's really light. And that one's super light, too. 
And then of course over here there's no more of those. Okay, so there's sustain, or what would be the sustain pedal if it was in there. And then this, only lifts up the base side all right so I've had a chance to clean this up a bit better still need to take a dremel with a wire brush and clean up a little bit of this rust here but uh, I'm gonna be getting back into this to uh, do the action but in the meantime I got a package from Howard Piando Industries with various tools I got my uh, tuning hammer now Actually go ahead and tune, make sure that fits. Hey, it fits. All right. And for tuning paraphernalia, I got my punch set, a fork. There you go. Uh, springs for the damper, but I forgot to get damper flange cord, so this one damper is going to have to wait. There's my felts. And a pen. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, get the keys back on here. And we'll go through the fun of leveling them. These pins I got are shorter than what is sold on the sites I've seen. 0.18 inches, so not sure what I should do. If I should just order the shortest ones and then cut off the ends, or maybe somebody does make balance rail pins of the correct size. I think I'm starting to find a balance here uh, to keep playing with this and then uh, get them all done. All right, I got this to a good spot where the where it's not hitting this rail back here. And I got a good height here and my key dip this is a, a domino with a spacer. This is a, about 0.378, so that's what I'm using as my dip gauge here. I have not regulated this. I will buy regulation tools later to do a bit more thorough stuff on the action because I want to shave down all these hammers, replace the dampers. So this, I'm just going to be doing the key leveling. I've also gotten rid of the uh, lost movement so that's pretty good there now and this is with a 10 uh, 10 mil spacer so I will be going ahead and putting a 10 mil spacer on all the balance pins
So four weak dampers with springs that have lost their spring. Quite a difference. So this is my cord that I got from Joann's. Uh, not sure if it's, well, it's not silk on the inside, so maybe it'll last for 10 years instead of 70 years, but uh, I'll be able to replace it again when the time comes because I plan to keep this piano, but anyhow. All right, so it's time to start tuning. I'm going to be doing a pitch raise. I'm using TuneLab Pro, the free version, which means every 14 notes I'll have to wait two minutes. But first, we're going to start with the pre-measurement. I have my settings set up here. I'm going to measure every C, E, G, etc. Bass bridge goes up to D3. Uh, wound strings go up to G3. And the treble bridge is at F sharp uh, 5. Offset is purple, that must mean that uh, it's in safety. All right, so A0. Okay, so the piano's been uh, tuned. I used TuneLab to do it. I used the free version, which meant I have to pod, pause for a couple minutes every 14 notes, but since this is my first time tuning a piano, it took long enough anyway that that wasn't really much of an issue. Uh, everything I've done, so all the keys have been leveled. I got the lost motion taken out, and there is still a tiny bit of lost motion because uprights do need some lost motion in order for the jack to engage the hammer just right, especially after a soft blow. I also fixed five of the dampers by replacing the damper springs and putting cord back in there. And I've also cleaned up under the desk. I polished the desk pins, although I am going to put new pins in because the tops of some of these pins are a little bit rusty. Uh, what I've not done, I have not done regulation in terms of adjusting the let off because I do plan to voice this a little bit later on. Uh, so I just wanted to get what it sounds like right now. But also, I don't have the regulation tools. I need to buy those next. But I want to hear what it sounds like right now. I want to make a record of what it sounds like now versus uh, when I first got it. So I can hear what it sounds like after being tuned, but before the hammers are all voiced. Other things I do plan to do, other than voicing the hammers, of course, adjust the uh, let off. And I also think I might replace the felt in here because some of these keys are a bit wobbly. So I'll probably do the felt underneath the key. I mean, that does look pretty good, but still, I'll probably do that, and especially this, because it looks a bit nasty. And of course, even down the road uh, after that, I'm going to replace all the damper felts, since they had bugs and they got holes 
some bugs in them and there's some pretty deep grooves so I'm going to replace the damper felts. I'm going to do a little bit better cleaning with the chap work, do some polishing and eventually uh, I'll go ahead and strip and refinish the piano so that it's looking good. But for now, here's how it sounds after being fixed up and tuned. God willing and the water don't rise, I'll get some more tools so that I can shave the hammers, revoice them, and do a full regulation. And that bit about the water not rising, that's actually literal. I'll also get the dampers replaced at some point, and we'll do a deeper cleaning of the trap work, strings, and finally refinish the piano. This is Family Piano, and thanks for watching.